Robert asked us uh, to make one more announcement this morning. Uh, when we pray for him, I also pray that he'll be healed of his cancer because he has cancer as well. Uh, so keep that in mind. This morning, we're going to talk about uh, the holidays. We're going to talk especially about Christmas. Okay? <laughs> The reason for the season. There is a reason for the season we're in. Philippians 1.18 says, What then? Only that in every way, whether in pretense or in truth, whether in pretense, thinking you know what God wants you to do, or in truth, at least Christ is preached. And in this I rejoice, yes, I will rejoice. <coughs> Today, all around the world, a lot of people haven't thought about Jesus Christ since last year. Well, they're thinking about Him today. That's nice. It's a shame <coughs> that it's not in their heart 365 days a year, but it's nice. The key here simply is Christ is being preached. And that's great. As we study the Bible, I'm going to give you some very absolute facts about celebrating Christmas or not celebrating it, but mostly how you celebrate it this morning with book, chapter, and verse. So pay attention. As we study the Bible, we see that God never commands us to observe a religious holiday. Our responsibility is to honor Christ as we worship Him. And how are we to do that? In spirit, with my heart, with my love, and in truth, by God's Word. One without the other is no good. Upon the first day of the week, now, the Spirit and truth, John 4, 24, Acts 20 and verse 7, plainly says, and as you come together on the first day of the week to partake of bread. What's that referring to? First of all, we're talking about the New Testament church. That's what the church of Christ is to go by our example written in the Bible of what the First Testament church did. They were taught and worked with by the apostles themselves. And those apostles were taught by Jesus Christ, God Himself. They were taught by Him, so I'd say we need to follow their pattern. Their pattern was on the first day of the week they gathered together to break bread right here. We're going to do the same thing today. And what is breaking of the bread? That is remembering Jesus Christ's death on the cross. We're remembering His burial. We're remembering His resurrection. We're remembering what it's all about in our lives. Because if what I was just saying didn't have anything to do with us, we would not go to heaven. Period. But we have the opportunity to do just that because of our precious Savior. Nothing in the New Testament authorizes, listen up, celebrations. Nothing. Or masses. You know, there's religions that have mass. Or special services of any kind concerning the birth of Christ. What do you mean special services? Palm Sunday and all these kind of things people, people men, have come up with. <laughs> special services concerning the birth of Christ. There's nothing in there that tells us that we're authorized to celebrate His birth. In fact, Paul warned people against establishing special holy days without biblical authority. Galatians chapter 4, 8 through 11. You might want to remember that. But then indeed, when you did not know God, this is before you learned the Scriptures, you served those which by nature are not gods. But now, after you have known God, after you've been taught the truth, the Word of God, or rather are known by God Himself, 
as a child of God? How it is, how is it that you turn again to the weak and beggarly elements to which you desire again to be in bondage? I want to do what the world does. I want to be accepted by mankind. Now, you observe days, ooh, you observe days and months and seasons and years. Paul says, I'm afraid for you lest I have labored with you in vain. Have I not taught you anything? Did you know these Scriptures were even in the Bible? So it makes it pretty clear. But we're not done yet. We need to be careful not to misunderstand about celebrating or not celebrating a holiday like being celebrated in the world. Nevertheless, Understand this. It is wrong to observe Christmas in any other ways than what I'm fixing to explain to you. Christmas time represents a rare opportunity, especially in this country, for many people to get away from work. With a job I had most of my life, I worked 12 and 14 hours a day, really and truly, six and seven days a week, really and truly. I looked forward to any day off I could get. It was like the biggest bonus of the year. It was beautiful. It represents a rare time for many people to get away from work and spend time with their extended family. We did that at my house yesterday. And they ate me out of the house and home. <laughs> and many enjoy giving gifts at this time of year to friends and family. Katie. There it is. Hope that's on Facebook. She needs to see it. I work this morning. <laughs> nevertheless, nevertheless, it is not wrong to observe Christmas in <clears throat> other ways like I just mentioned. If some Christians believe, listen up, that Christmas should not be observed in any way, their views should be respected. What does that mean? Here is a Christian that will not gather with his family even though they're off. They will not eat with their family. They're certainly not going to give gifts or accept a gift. <coughs> they will not put up one light. In fact, they will really have the electricity to their house cut off. We cannot disrespect that. We have to respect that. Why do they do that is from here. Our conscience. We've got to be careful not to trample on somebody's conscience. Other Christians should not provoke them to violate their consciences. That is found in Romans chapter 14, 13 through 21. Read it. It's very clear. I'm not going to go on here because of time this morning. Now, those Christians who not, do not observe in any way have no right to, content, to condemn those who observe the day. Listen, to, let me finish this sentence. They don't have a right to uh, pick on these people that do observe this time to associate with friends and family and share gifts. You're talking about Christmas. I'm talking about to associate with friends and family and share <coughs> gifts. And they might even put a light up. In Romans 14, 22 and 23, it says this. Do you have faith? Have it to yourself before God. God, I've studied it, I've read it, and this is what I believe and I have total faith in it. Happy is he who does not condemn himself in what he approves. What does that mean? Well, I don't believe in celebrating it. I'm not going to give a gift, but I will just to appease you, man. But I really feel guilty about it. Ooh, that's dangerous. Well, I'm going to give gifts, and I, I don't like her. I will not give gifts to her just because of the other guy. We can't do that. We've got to be, we've got to inside know what we believe. But he who doubts is condemned if he eats because he does not eat from faith, but whatever is not from faith is sin. 
We have to be careful in studying what we're talking about this morning, don't we? There's more to it than just a flippant attitude of it don't matter. Well, it does matter on the way we, the way we approach other people. We don't want to take anybody and kill their spirit and run them away. Associate with friends and family and share gifts. They also are accepted by God Himself. <coughs> Romans 14, 5 and 6. Remembering Christ. As Christians, we know that we must remember Christ as the world does on December the 25th. For us, it's every day of the year. And not just once or twice a year. We remember Jesus Christ by doing everything we do in word and deed in the name of the Lord. Colossians 3.17 This is our life. Think of our lives as Christians as a bicycle wheel, perfectly round with spokes. And you know, we've got all those spokes represents all kind of different responsibilities. I have to give my wife my time and attention. I have to give my children my time and attention, my grandchildren my time and attention, my great-grandchildren time and attention. I have to give my family of God my attention. I have to give, if they were still alive, my parents or my grandparents. I even have to give my son-in-laws my attention. <laughs> so I've got all these spokes. But in the center of my wheel is the axle. That's Jesus Christ. Everything in my life needs to revolve around the bearings of the axle. Jesus Christ. So yes, I remember Him in every facet of my life, which means every day of my life. And that's the way it has to be. The birth would not mean, the, the birth of Jesus Christ wouldn't mean near as much to a Christian if Jesus Christ had not died on the cross. If Jesus Christ, God Himself incarnate, came as a human to earth, He didn't do any miracles, He didn't, he didn't come to save the lost, He just appeared lived a life, he uh, died of old age or some natural death. It just wouldn't mean so much about the birth of Christ. He's just another man. It's because of our Lord's sacrifice, His sacrificial death on the cross of Calvary, that makes His birth so much meaningful. What do you mean by that, preacher? If you think I'm not thankful that Jesus Christ took on human form and came to this to this earth so that He could die on the cross. I don't see how I can live with myself. I'm excited about it. I am so relieved about it. We're going to talk about that. And Jesus stood falsely accused before Pilate himself, facing an unjust and cruel death at the hands of sinners. And it was very unjust. He said, listen closely, this is Jesus Himself. To this end was I born. This is the reason I'm here. And for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. The reason Christ was born is so. Every person at Antioch Church of Christ, everyone that is of the truth, Here's my voice. Here's my word. And if we hear the word of Jesus Christ, we're to obey it. Amen. His birth was celebrated by angels themselves and by men. Why? Because of what He was going to do. Die for us, for all men, bringing salvation to all. Because of this, we find repeated, repeated emphasis. Emphasis. The Bible places, places emphasis many, 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 many times all through it. Even in the Old Testament. Not upon Christ's birth, but upon His death for all mankind. John 3, 16 and 17. For God sent His Son to earth that whosoever should believe in Him, church, should have everlasting life. See, He was sent here not to condemn us, to a burning fire of eternity. He was sent here to save us from that and get us to heaven. And we couldn't do it without our emphasis, and it'll be here this morning, Amen. on the death of Jesus Christ for us. 
And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among men in whom He is well pleased. Peace. The peace that He brought us. We were all once His enemies. We were all sinners. We, not all of us were at the time baptized into the body of Christ, as it says in Galatians 3.26 and 27. And by the way, that's the only way you can get into it. All of our sins weren't washed away as they were in baptism, Acts 2.38. We were His enemy. We had our wicked works. But now we're found today without reproach. I am bringing nothing against Christ, nothing against His Word, nothing against the church He established in Acts chapter 2. Because I've obeyed the Gospel. I have been baptized into the body of Christ. Galatians again, 3, 26 and 27. And with that, the blood of Christ and His Word will continue to be in me. Colossians 1, 19 through 23. I'm speaking for all of us. You know, a, a multitude of the heavenly hosts said this praise was a proclamation. A proclamation means I'm proclaiming, I'm telling everybody of the newborn king and a confirmation of the glorious tidings to the shepherds and through them to all people. Angels shouted with joy a celebration. Why? Of the entry of God into human life. He brought us peace, Philippians 4, 7 through 9. Peace that honestly passes all understanding. As I was with our precious brother and sister Friday night. Can you imagine for one minute not knowing from God's Word where you're going and facing death's door? Our sister knew it. Our brother knew in her behalf that she knew and they had a peace that passeth all understanding. Peace was proclaimed or given by angels on the night in which the Prince of Peace was born. Glory to God in the highest, the peace uh, to men of good will who honor God, which was promised and proclaimed by this angelic host. Now, am I glad, am I happy, am I joyous that Jesus Christ was born? Are you kidding? Absolutely. So that's where I need to put my emphasis. Why? It's not commanded here. Remembering the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ is what is revealed actually in the Scripture. Matthew 26 through 28, and many of our brothers use these verses on the Lord's table. But observing His birth religiously on any day of the year is not is not put in that book nowhere. 1 Peter 4.11 Let us speak only the oracles of God. Only what God says. Not what I think I feel or what some man's made up. Romans 6.3-6 3 through 6 teaches us that we are baptized into the bad death. Uh, his death. We're buried through Him, through baptism into death. Then we're resurrected in newness of life to be like Christ. All this is Scripture. We have to go to the Word of God. Though no one would celebrate December the 25th as the birth of Christ, can one use this day as a national or civil holiday? Well, now you're talking about something completely different. We're not going to celebrate the death of Christ like it's some command of God because it isn't. There's too many people celebrating too many things as commands that are not even written in the Bible. We're not going to do that. But is there anything wrong in, in celebrating as a national or civil holiday like we do the 4th of July, Labor Day, Thanksgiving? That's a big deal around my house. My birthday is now celebrated like it ought to be. <laughs> to get together with family and loved ones to eat and thank God for our blessings, to give gifts and cards and ties to one another. <laughs> I'm, if I told you that was one of you people out there in your family which one would it be? I might ask you to raise your hand 
Mm. Family togetherness. Family togetherness can be expressed through meals, bunches of them, occasions of gift giving, sharing of dice cards as we celebrate any anniversary or birthday in the family. Just like we do Thanksgiving, 4th of July. On 4th of July, it's usually shooting fireworks. Thanksgiving's got to be about a turkey for some reason. It's more important than any ham. <laughs> My birthday, uh, eat a bowl of cereal. But the thing is, it's just things we do. It's, it's okay. To observe Christmas now as a religious holiday, however, is wrong because the Bible flat out does not authorize it. In the end, in the end, there is no condemnation of an individual either way as long as he does not observe in any way, including from his heart, a religious aspect like the command of God, we're to do this. This is the day we're supposed to give honor to the... I'm glad he was born every day of my life, and I know you are. Amen. Amen. Well, I'm going to tell you what I'm really glad of. Amen. And this is awful sad to say, but we have to say it as Christians. We're happier that he died on the cross for us than we are that he was born. Amen. We We're not that way to offend anybody. <clears throat> the day of Christ's birth is not revealed in the Bible. Wonder why? It. We need to respect that. Deuteronomy 29, 29 actually says something like this. Some things God just kept secret. We don't have to know. Well, was he born on December the 25th? No. He was born sometimes right after the harvest season, more likely in the fall. But what difference does it make? Not a lot, but I'm glad he was born. And I know how he was born. You know, Let's just obey what God has authorized. Remember the Lord's death, burial, and resurrection, 1 Corinthians 15, 3 through 4. Let's just leave the speculation out of it. What's so merry about Christmas? The birth of Christ would be so much more than just a manger scene. No, it's the beginning of God's entrance into the human family experience. He walked on earth as a perfect man. And that's what I'm trying to exemplify and I can never do. But my Savior could. You see, it's the willingness of God to expose Himself, open Himself up so we can really see Him to the total vulnerability of being human. Which is at the actual heart of His incarnation. And what is incarnation? Well, you know what reincarnation is, don't you? Where you come back as another creature. Incarnation is where the Spirit of God, Jesus Christ, came into human form. His incarnation. His incarnation is to expose Himself as a human for us to see as an example what to do. <clears throat> he is God made flesh. John 1.14 and Philippians 2.5-8. What does this mean to us? You and I look at the major scenes of Mary and Joseph, the sleeping little baby, shepherds, animals, angels, all of it is so meaningful, including to us, and it's beautiful to us. In fact, every secular world knows about these things. At least they're talking about Jesus in some way. I wish they could talk about studying this and only this and not books. Not man-made thoughts to understand how precious and wonderful what we're talking about today is. In Matthew 2.16, it is recorded that Herod ordered the death of all baby boys under two years of age. Can you imagine that? A mindless and bloody atrocity took place because of the birth of Jesus Christ. After reading the story, we're not caught off guard whatsoever of the potential terror of the terror of the ugly face again on Calvary. Jesus Christ had a bloody beginning and he had a bloody end. And it was all for me and you. I want to remember his death. Why? Because it means more to me than his birth, but most of all because it's commanded in the book. 
where the other isn't. Doesn't mean I'm not happy about it. The birth, this birth will lead to the only solution for mankind. This birth, the birth of Jesus, finally led to the solution. Our solution of going to heaven or hell. Our solution of making it available to us to go to heaven. And that was on the cross. 1 Corinthians 2.12 And Him crucified. Whew. We cannot use birth without looking at the cross. It's just, it's just impossible. <coughs> Never forget Acts chapter 20 and verse 7. Church, as you come together on the first day of the week, this is our holiday, a special celebration today. As we come together to break bread, when we do that, let your hearts, your minds, and your souls go back to the cross and think of the death, burial, and resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. That is a command. That's the real reason for the season. May all the blessings of this season be with you and yours knowing. These blessings may be found only in Jesus Christ. Ephesians 1.3 God the Father of Jesus has blessed us in so many ways, spiritually and physically. Church, let's give thanks and let's give homage and let's give remembrance and our utmost respect to obey the command as we go to the table shortly. And let's not ever forget the birth of Christ and why the birth of Christ is so that man you can go to heaven. Plain put, if you've not been baptized into the church that Jesus Christ established in Acts chapter 2, you need to hear the gospel. Romans 10, 17. My faith cometh by hearing and hearing what the Word of God. And you have to believe every word of it in order to satisfy God Almighty. Hebrews 6, uh, 11, 6. Change anything in your life you need to change. It's called repenting. No matter what it is, don't let it hold you from going to heaven. And then confess Jesus is the Son of God and be baptized and wash your sins away. Acts 2, 38. Most of us have already done that. And we've got the most precious thing on earth. If we confess our sins to God, He faithful and just to forgive us our sins. And what's even better than that? Up to that point, all my sins, when I ask forgiveness, will never be brought up again. Hebrews 8, 12. It's beautiful. We're members of the Lord's church. And we've got a Savior. And we've got a heaven that awaits for us. And it's all because of the death of Christ. If you have a need, come together. Come forward as we stand and say. When Jesus comes, the reward is.